Hi everyone. Welcome to this video on getting started with checkbox and radio button components provided by Syncfusion in a Blazor server application. In this video, I will explain how to create a Blazor application and add the Syncfusion Blazor package. Then I will show you how to add the Syncfusion Blazor checkbox component to a Blazor server application. After creating a checkbox, I will explain how to show a checkbox in checked and intermediate states and explain how to disable it. After that, I will create a radio button and explain how to group radio buttons, show a radio button in a selected state and finally how to disable a radio button. To explore the features available in checkbox and radio button components, visit our website link provided in the above YouTube card. You can create a Blazor application using either Visual Studio 2019 or Visual Studio Code. In this video, I will create a server-side Blazor application using Visual Studio 2019. I have installed the .NET Core SDK 3.1.2. To follow along with this video, one should have a basic understanding of c -sharp, HTML and CSS. You can also watch a detailed video on Blazor and Syncfusion controls titled Create a Blazor Server App and Add Syncfusion Blazor Components, which I have shared in the YouTube card. Now, let me create a Blazor project first. I select the Blazor app template, provide the project name, my Blazor server app and click create. Here the Blazor server app was selected by default and I proceed by clicking the create button. Now Visual Studio has generated a Blazor server application. To use Syncfusion Blazor components, I need to install the Syncfusion Blazor NuGet package in my application. To do that, I open the NuGet package manager by right clicking the project file and selecting manage NuGet packages. Under the browse tab, I search for the Syncfusion Blazor package. I select it and click the install button. The installation is completed now. When you check the dependencies folder and the packages folder and you will find the Syncfusion Blazor package added to this application. Next, the Syncfusion Blazor service must be registered in the services container. For that, I open the startup.cs file and use the Syncfusion Blazor namespace. Within the configure services method, I make a call to the add Syncfusion Blazor method. This makes Syncfusion Blazor services available within the application. Next, I must register a valid Syncfusion license key. To do so, in the configure method, I call the Syncfusion Licensing, Syncfusion License Provider Static Method, Register License. You also need to pass your Syncfusion License Key as a string parameter in the Register License method. I have done this off stream. Within the Pages folder, open the host.cs HTML file. Within the head tag, add the required CSS file to render the Syncfusion Blazor components. In this example, I refer the CSS file from the installed Syncfusion Blazor package. Now, let me add the Syncfusion Blazor checkbox to the index component. To do so, I use the Syncfusion Blazor button namespace. Adding this namespace here allows me to use the checkbox component markup. Also, I can import this namespace in the imports.razor page to make it available to all the Razor pages in this application. I remove the existing code and type a SF checkbox tag and set the label as default. I save the file and run the application. You can see the checkbox with the provided label. I can click the checkbox to check or uncheck it. Now, let me show you how to load the checkbox in a checked state. In the SF checkbox tag, I add the checked property and set the value to true. I save the file and run the application. As you can see, the checkbox is in a checked state. To show a checkbox in an indeterminate state, in the SF checkbox tag, I add the property indeterminate and set the value to true. I remove the checked property because setting this property will override the indeterminate property. I save the file and run the application. Now the checkbox is in an indeterminate state. To disable the checkbox, in the SF checkbox tag, I add the property disabled and set its value to true. I save the file and run the application. 
you can see the checkbox in a disabled state and the end user will not be able to change the value. The checkbox label position can be changed to right or left of the checkbox. By default, the label will be placed at the right side of the checkbox. To change the position to left side in the SF checkbox tab, I add the label position property and set its value to label position dot before. I save the file and run the application. You can see the checkbox with the label on the left side. Now, let me add the Syncfusion Blazor radio button to the index component. First, I remove the checkbox related codes. Then I type a SF radio button tag and set the label as cash on delivery. I set the value property with cash on delivery, which is the data passed to the server when submitting the form. A radio button is used to select one option from a list of predefined choices. I add another radio button tag and set the label as credit or debit card and set the value property as credit or debit. In the same way, I add two more options for net banking and other wallets. To select a radio button option from these, I need to group them. I use the name property of the radio button to group them so that I can select one value at a time. Hence, I add the name property and set its value as payment. I add the same property to the other radio button tags also. I add a div tag for alignment and set the class name as radio control. Using the style tag, I set the class margin and width. I save the file and run the application. The radio buttons has the provided label. I click the first radio button to select it. Then I select the second option. And you can see the previously selected option has been cleared. And only one option is available for selection at a time. Now, let me show you how to load the radio button in a selected state. In the first SF radio button tag, I add the property checked and set the value to true. I save the file and run the application. The first radio button is in a selected state. I can disable one or more options from the radio buttons so that the end user will be unable to change the value. Let me show you how to disable the first option, cash on delivery. In the first SF radio button tag, I add the property disabled and set its value to true. I remove the property checked so that it will not act as the default selection from this list. I save the file and run the application. As you can see, the first radio button is in a disabled state and the end user will not be able to change the value. The radio button's label position can be changed to the left or right. By default, the label is placed to the right. To change the position to left in the SF radio button tag, I add the property label position and set its value to radio label position before. I do the same for other tags. I save the file and run the application. Now you can see the radio button with label on the left side. If you need more information about Syncfusion Blazor checkbox and radio button components, refer to our online documentation. A link is provided in the description of this video. Finally, let me summarize the main points. I have explained the steps to create a Blazor application and add the Syncfusion Blazor package. Then I showed you how to add the Syncfusion Blazor checkbox component to the Blazor server application. And I explained how to show a checkbox in checked and intermediate states and disable the checkbox. Finally, I created a radio button, explained how to group radio buttons, showed a radio button in a selected state and explain how to disable a radio button. You can download this working example from the GitHub link in the video description below. You can also see about getting a free license key to use our Blazor products if you are eligible for our community license. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to our channel to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching.